Hello and welcome on Tafaragadamu. The Ethiopian Red Cross Society is perhaps the oldest humanitarian organization in the country. And as we observe the Red Cross and Red Crescent Day, it would be just as appropriate to look into its activities and the challenges it faces. And my guest today is the new Secretary General of the organization, Dr. Meshesha Shwaraga. A very warm welcome to the program, Dr. Meshesha, uh, again. And thank you very much, um, Tafaragadamu, for having me uh, on uh, your uh, program. The last time you were in the studio uh, for a similar interview was when you were head of the CCRDA, the uh, Consortium of uh, Christian Relief and Development Association. This is an umbrella organization of NGOs in Ethiopia. Now you've moved as the head of the ATP Red Cross Society, basically, what, three months now? Yeah, uh, it was a, a begin a new, a new engagement at the ATP Red Cross uh, Society uh, in February yeah. this year. It's similar, but a different, a different job. Uh, definitely, uh, in terms of um, the main focus, uh, that one is also humanitarian and development. Uh, this uh, too is focusing on development and humanitarian engagement uh, in terms of this one um, uh, they share uh, common uh, common features and both of them are also membership based organizations I mean as we observe the Red Cross Day today is I think interesting to explore I mean you are the oldest humanitarian organization in Ethiopia is that correct? Yeah uh, we were established in 1935. Uh, I think uh, we have been the oldest uh, special entity humanitarian organization uh, in Ethiopia. And you claim a membership of? We have got members uh, in total of 5.4 million. And you're present in what, 11 regional states? You have re 11 branch offices, you know, spread across the country? Yes, uh, these are the regional branches, 11 uh, regional branches, um, and we have got also more than 33 zonal branches, uh, and we are also operating in um, 84 uh, Waradas, where we have got 84 Warada branches, and uh, at the Kabale level, we have got what we call the Ethiopia Red Cross uh, Kabale committees operating in more than 5,000 uh, Kabales all over the country. Everybody knows about the Ethiopian Red Cross Society. Of you, course. You, you have those, uh, those ambulances everywhere. You have uh, the blood donation scheme that has since uh, moved to the Ministry of Health uh, and so on and so forth. You have millions of members. But what? Well, are you really present? Yes. Um, my question is, if you will, it's visible, it is not. I, I may say yes and no. Uh, I can't really uh, say that uh, the Ethiopian Red Cross uh, Society is not utterly visible. It is, it is visible, uh, although sometimes the media engagement is very limited, uh, not organized, not really uh, regularly happening that uh, may uh, maybe might be the reason why uh, some people might think uh, we are invisible but in terms of programmatic uh, activities in terms of uh, humanitarian engagement uh, we are serving annually more than one million Ethiopian people and uh, we are spending more than uh, 500 million Ethiopian more on humanitarian and long-term development that uh, makes a uh, uh, all this make this institution visible in terms of um, undertaking development of humanitarian activities. When you say humanitarian, are you talking about emergencies? Yes, uh, the, the emergency uh, food aid is one. Uh, we have got also uh, uh, non-food uh, items. We also support the internally displaced uh, people. Uh, as you know, the IDP problem in this country is, um, uh, is getting worse from time to time. Um, so in line with uh, the humanitarian development that needs, uh, the Ethiopian Red Cross Society is providing various uh, supports. Let's talk about emergencies in this case. You said IDPs, an uh, interesting topic because we have, what, close to 3 million internally displaced? Yes, um, very unfortunate, Tafara. Uh, this is a new... 
development in, in Ethiopia. Ethiopia is known uh, for how many uh, and peaceful uh, coexistence. Unfortunately, uh, this uh, culture, uh, this national heritage is being challenged as a result of uh, ethnic conflicts, um, uh, which lead into internal displacement, uh, which is estimated to be 3 million, 130,000 uh, in Ethiopia. Uh, this is uh, at the moment based uh, on the estimation of the United Nations and uh, OCHA, UN OCHA. We are the largest IDP country globally. So this is a very uh, serious problem. Also the government and other uh, actors are doing something to, to reverse this problem, uh, but uh, as you have rightly said, this is the most uh, ugliest incident happening in this country. So, so you are the first after the government to kind of uh, provide a immediate response, is that correct? We are not uh, the, the only, no, after the government, the biggest inter... Uh, for, for sure, uh, I was locally, uh, sometimes even, sometimes, we might be also, uh, we may, um, I can say we might uh, be considered as early uh, responders uh, to, to these problems. As you know, uh, we have got more than uh, 5,000 Red Cross Kabbalah uh, committees, and these committees are very operational, and they might be considered uh, as early responders. So they uh, taking this into account. We, we can safely say that the Ethiopian Red Cross uh, could be considered as the early response uh, to this and other humanitarian exigencies. So, so uh, when you pro provide this response at a Kabbalah level, uh, and as you as you say, you have you have meetings of uh, you know members who would respond to that, and you have committees that you have developed all along. Uh, are they organizationally effective enough to kind of provide? That? of response? Honestly speaking, uh, there is still area where we have to improve. Recently, we have started a reform engagement uh, that is uh, predicated on the ultimate objective of um, boosting the efficiency, effectiveness of these structures. But as they are uh, uh, here, we yes, um, they can consider them as early respondent, uh, but for sure, uh, there are areas uh, where we need to improve, uh, particularly um, their contribution, not only to respond uh, to emergency, but to have a, a resilient uh, community. So you basically work with the government even at that level, right? Yes. Um, so I'm just wondering what kind of, re the, you know, the type of relationship that you have with those administrators at that level, because when there are emergencies, you need to act fast. When you want to do that, you need, you need, you need a lot less bureaucracy. Uh, but relatively, um, as a humanitarian organization, as a um, non-governmental uh, organization, uh, we, can, we can claim that uh, we are relatively efficient, we are relatively um, expedient in terms of responding. Normally, we undertake um, an assessment. This assessment should be carried out within 24 hours. Uh, so immediately we have to respond to the problem uh, within, uh, within our means and the resources we have. As regards to the relationship with the government, uh, um, based on the charter we have, Article 3, uh, sub-Article 1, we are auxiliary uh, to the government uh, while we are impartial, independent. This, uh, the autonomy is there, this independence is there. So uh, the collaboration might be jointly undertaking the NIS assessment. This will be uh, one uh, area. Uh, the, the second area is um, we undertake a partnership mapping. Uh, normally, uh, who is responding uh, to uh, to which needs and at which area. In that respect, also uh, we collaborate and also the, we take also the priorities of the government. Um, the government is uh, the one uh, who is leading the whole uh, the whole process. As auxiliary, uh, we, are, we are expected to comply with the priorities and the needs of the government. What are the priorities now? Based on the, the country humanitarian response plan uh, prepared for 2019, uh, the, the first uh, priority is the emergency food aid. Uh, as you know, uh, more than 8 million people right now are seeking emergency food aid. The second one is nutrition. 
uh, in Ethiopia. Uh, we have got uh, in emergency city more than 13, more than 5 million people are looking for uh, nutrition support. Um, this is uh, the second. The third one is the IDPs. IDP, uh, from the very onset of, uh, I've already mentioned to you, is a new development. And uh, uh, the government should also respond, other humanitarian actors uh, should also act. This is a third uh, very uh, important priorities as per the humanitarian news plan of the country. But it's a cash-strapped institution. How do you chip in into this large, big plan that the government has outlined for you guys? Yes, uh, you, you're right when you say that it's a very expensive uh, engagement. Um, we are talking about more than eight. Uh, 0.6 million people looking for uh, humanitarian assistance uh, in one way or another. And uh, the total uh, the budget requirement is estimated in terms of uh, 1.3 billion American bill. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a money that Ethiopia used to uh, need uh, for five years uh, or six years. Now, in just annually, uh, we are compelled to have to raise uh, this amount of money. Mm. The tragic situation here uh, is you do have competing uh, needs, uh, humanitarian uh, crisis in, uh, here and there, and also we do have a government policy shift in bank donor countries, uh, so it became very difficult to raise the money uh, uh, commensurate with the, 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 the need. So, so have you, have you designed any plan to kind of generate so money from all these things? Yes, yeah. In light of this, uh, and uh, cognizant of the limitation, the, the donor fatigues, uh, and also other emerging needs in back donors, uh, we are of the opinion right now, the management of the Ethiopian Red Cross, the board uh, included, are thinking uh, to to focus on the innovative uh, resource mobilization, domestic resource mobilization. Um, we have already prepared the game plan. What would that include? Uh, that would include, um, we are going to involve uh, various um, key uh, Because I feel that there is also some a degree of exhaustion as far as you know raising funds within the country is concerned. Yeah, exhaustion is uh, one, and there are also competing needs. No doubt about it. So, but but um, we are dealing with millions of people who are uh, seeking assistance, and this is a existential crisis uh, of first order. Uh, this is a life and a day situation for our citizens. So, what have you? Uh, so, in light of all these things, uh, even if it looks a repeated um, effort, a parallel effort, simultaneous efforts uh, from various actors, we don't have another uh, option than um, than uh, tapping into local potential. Let me give you a figure. For example, in Ethiopia, over the last uh, 27 or 20 years, based on the World Bank report, we have got and also based on the MDG uh, final report, Ethiopia managed to have uh, the poverty level in Ethiopia. And that means we have got more than 40 million people uh, in Ethiopia who are earning more than uh, 2.5 uh, American dollar. Just if these 40 million people donate just 30 billion, this is 1.2 billion Ethiopian dollar. Imagine what we can do with this money. Why we so there is a, the potential is, uh, is still there. Uh, in Ethiopia, I don't really say, I don't really agree with exhaustion. The Ethiopian people are compassionate. Uh, but they are very, really compassionate. And the main thing is informing the level and magnitude of the problem that we are really addressing. Why would they be attracted to you and not to other institutions? Uh, well, for one thing, uh, the Ethiopian Red Cross uh, is, is, is the association of the people. Established by the Ethiopian people, not established. It's not a foreign uh, organization. It has also a reputation of of a first respondent as a first respondent. This is already known. A, a, the Ethiopian Red Cross has uh, has already um, established itself in terms of uh, ramifications and also institutional outreach.
uh, which is which you don't have it with other institutions. I have said to you, we have um, a presence at the Kabbalah level. You can't find any humanitarian organization, be it national or uh, international, that has got this uh, an institutional comparative advantage. But you have a big elephant too, a very bloated bureaucracy spending so much on overhead costs. For, for sure, to be honest, um, I, I, I accept your contention, uh, but we have rightly, uh, right now we have started uh, the, the reform uh, in line uh, uh, with making this institution efficient, mobile, um, agile, um, and also uh, cost, uh, cost cautious. Um, um, for, for sure, the administrative cost might be relatively less compared to uh, local uh, NGOs. It might be a little bit big, uh, but still, if you compare it with uh, international uh, charities, the, the, the administrative expense might not be that big. So what are your plans? Can you be more specific? Yes. Uh, are, are you going to make it more agile and uh, effective institution? I mean, you know, uh, looking forward. Yeah, but, but first and foremost, um, the, the, the first thing that we are going to make uh, is we are revamping, retouching the strategic uh, direction of this institution. Is there going to be a market departure from the past? There will not be really market de departure, but what we are going to do is it should be in line with the, ch uh, the mandates given by, by the charter. Uh, that's the first thing that we, are, we have to do. The second uh, is it should be also in line with the priorities of the government uh, based on the long-term development program of the country. Uh, this is the... Uh, GDP, uh, what is that, uh, GDP2. And also, it should be also in line uh, with uh, the Agenda 2030. And this is the Sustainable Development Goal of the United Nations. And uh, as uh, Ethiopia is a member of the African Union, a prominent member, the founding uh, member, and uh, we have Agenda 2063. Uh, so, element uh, in, what, uh, in this uh, plans, international commitment, should be also reflected in strategic plan. The other thing is we are the member of the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent. And uh, it has called what they call SP2020. So all these things should be, uh, should be, should be included in, the, in our strategic plan. And the current humanitarian situation emerging and also the anticipated humanitarian challenge in the future. That should be also taken. In, in, in tandem with all this exercise, we are going to revamping the, the, the uh, strategic plan. The other one is a program. The program architecture should be also recrafted based on the, uh, the strategic plan. Currently, this is underway almost uh, on the strategic front. We have almost finalized. The first draft has been already produced. The program, uh, the theory of change for the program, that has been already completed. The third is, is uh, the membership and the volunteers. As I have said, the Ethiopian Red Cross is a membership-based, volunteers-based institution. The members are the owners of this uh, legendary institution. So, um, but... In terms of membership, the size we have is by far less than uh, what uh, the potential really avails. So we are going to expand the membership base. We are actually we are working to double uh, this membership in the coming uh, six months. So we are going to have a campaign uh, to enlarge the membership. The same holds true for the, the volunteer. The volunteers we have is uh, about 40,000. Uh, 40, Take a Burundi, the smallest quite country, in the world. quite insignificant. Quite insignificant. So raising membership is one thing, raising volunteers is one thing, but effective engagement of the members and the volunteers, based on their uh, their um, professional background, is another uh, very important. The other one is modernization, automation of the data management of the members. The other issue with the membership is uh, the composition. The composition of the member by buying the far is skewed towards the rural. Out of the 5.5 5 million we have, almost 98% of them are the rural. They are the, from the, these are the peasants. 
So we have to go into the urban territories and uh, diversify the membership composition. This we are going to uh, do. The other one is the allocation formula. Uh, you are right when you say that uh, the, um, our administrative expense is a little bit big. So from the IG, income gen the generate activity, the money that we are generating from all these facilities should be amenable uh, and governed by resource allocation formula. We have already decided 80% of the resource should go to humanitarian and a development activity. These are the kind of change that we are going to insert. Interesting. I mean, he, he, the government has been generous. Uh, in many ways for your organization, the Ethiopian Red Cross. I mean, for many years, since the imperial times, it provided land for free grants. You got land grants. You've got buildings and so on and so forth. But for 30 years now, you can't even build your own headquarters in Addis Ababa, despite the fact that you've started working on it. That shows the ineffectiveness of the Ethiopian Red Cross. Is that a fair criticism? I would say... Um a little bit, but that requires a little bit uh, correction. <sighs> yes, uh, we haven't finished uh, the, the Fuluha uh, building complex, multi-purpose uh, complex, but there are also some, some, some plausible reasons for that one, like uh, changing the, the design uh, and also complying with the requirements, the building requirement of the municipalities that um, that has um, escalated the cost aspect. To finish this thing, it requires in terms of um, the current price, 2.2 billion uh, Ethiopian bull. This is uh, very big. And at the same time, we have to also do humanitarian activities, and uh, uh, that could be also one reason. But still, uh, you are correct um, that we have to need to, to exploit the potential we have in the country. The government policy is also changing from time to time. The government is not really as generous as it used to be in the past. But, but, but look, you know, you have the presidents as patrons of your institution. Yes. And that, is, that makes a lot of difference. That makes a lot. Uh, Biden is Biden now. I think uh, we shouldn't really dwell on the past. The past should be also should be a lesson for the future. And now, uh, we, do, we have got a new board, a new leadership, and uh, we have clearly defined change uh, agenda. Um, uh, believe me, in the coming uh, years, uh, we are going to see a, a different uh, Ethiopian Red Cross society. Um, the building that you have um, mentioned, you go now, check, uh, almost uh, the, the contractor is operating day and night, even during night, so there is a lot of progress there. And we are also in the process of building, uh, developing a business plan that would enable us also to inject uh, money uh, private from the banks. That is, good. that is also the strategy we have set. Uh, and so on the IG front, uh, we are really working. But the IG, the income generation activity, as a whole in the country, the resource potential we have as a whole in the country should be really well documented. And we to, now we have initiated the process of resource banking. And there has to be also uh, the Ethiopian Red Cross Strategic Investment Fund, uh, where the branch, resource-rich branch, would contribute to what is that pool fund, and they would get also administrative administrative um, payment for uh, for the uh, for the late other branch uh, using their money so with this innovative that's, mechanism that's going to be very tricky yeah huh? yeah it's very tricky uh, 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 but we are into it I think we don't have also another alternative other than uh, coming up with this initiative in an uh, innovative approach that will help us how, how long do you plan to stay here at the helm of the Ethiopian Red Cross. <laughs> it's a very difficult question. Uh, well, to be honest with you, the, um, it's not my intention to stay for uh, for uh, long tenure, uh, probably one term, uh, maximum, uh, but God knows. Well, Dr. Melisha, good luck, and thank you very much. It was a pleasure having you on my show. Thank you very much. <laughs>